Wonderful day, wonderful day. My name is Ben Baptiste. I'm the commander of Post 28... Microphone's dying. Post 2846, so I'd like to welcome you to the Veterans of Foreign War, VFW Post 2846, on this beautiful day to celebrate a very accomplished individual that I've known from such a young man. Um, just just want to share a little bit. Our history goes back uh, to just being very small. I was the run of the litter. They were a little older than me. And we did a lot of things in the Oakdale Woods. And uh, I would say that before we both joined the military, we were already at war in those woods. And, 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 and we learned what it was to be a man, and we learned a lot of life lessons, and uh, those life lessons have carried us on to becoming men like this wonderful man is today. Uh, so first and foremost, I'd like to just say I'm proud of you, brother. You could have went a lot of different directions, and this is where you are, so give him a round of applause. It's amazing that through a conversation, how words become action and action becomes things, right? So we started this conversation, it was more congratulatory, and then now I'm looking at the crowd and seeing how many people it brought together, and it's true testament of his life's accomplishments because there's all walks of life here, people coming from different directions, different age groups, and it just shows your impact on the community and on the world. So, so again, going back to that being proud, um, as part of our conversation, that conversation and recognizing Colonel Barnett, my mother caught wind of that conversation and uh, and just wanted to do more. You know, wanted to take action, wanted to wanted to bring people together. And I think a lot of us, you know, wasn't hard to get everybody to come together and say, absolutely, let's get on board. So I want to have her say a few words about um, how she was inspired by 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 really being the uh, being the maestro behind doing all this. So. My son's giving me three minutes. I'll, I want to begin with this. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Because this is a building, but we are the people. And we're stronger in numbers. And I want to say with Paul, I remember when he was a ninja. <laughs> So our history goes way back, but it's so good to celebrate something good because there's so much going on in the world today. And to celebrate, thank you, Paul, for letting us celebrate you. We are proud of you, we honor you, and the VFW honors you. Without saying, and I wanna say it now because we get really busy, the VFW is, the kitchen help, Naomi, um, Lynn, my daughter, Mary Ann, my daughter-in-law, Janine Baptiste, um, thank you, because we're stronger in numbers. And I wanna say to the Roderick brothers, before we even got in here, they have held the foundation down. So we're honoring them too, because with all, Without their help, we, we probably wouldn't be here celebrating. So today, we're stronger in numbers. Please come out and celebrate with us and um, help us be better because this is just a building, but we're stronger as people in, in numbers. So thank you, Paul. Thank you very much for everything you have done, everything positive. And thank you for giving us something positive to celebrate. May God bless you. So before I, one of those Roderick brothers to present something to Mr. Barnett, um, I just want maybe people that don't understand the military dynamic to understand the significance of, uh, of Colonel Barnett's accomplishments. Only about 2% of officers reach the, reach the rank of Colonel. And about 8% of that 2% look like myself and Mr. Barnett, if you could pick up what I'm laying down. So that, it's just amazing if you look about it. There's 1.3 to 1.5 million people in the military. So that number just really should, should hit home on, on how much work it took to get there. So I want you guys to at least leave with that. And I'd like... 
Can I have Mr. Rod Roderick speak and uh, do this presentation? He's been our quartermaster. This man is the most dedicated man. He's the reason why a lot of people are not forgotten in this town. I don't know anybody that has personally done more for veterans in this town uh, than Rod Roderick. So, so again, matter of fact, give Rod a round of applause before you stop. Paul, you've only been a member of the VFW for a short while, but on behalf of the Way Him veterans, we thank you for years of service as master ceremonies. Um, last year we missed you, and I got stuck doing it, so. <laughs> but we have an appreciation award for you. I'll read it. It says, Appreciation Award presented to Colonel Paul A. Barnett for meritorious and distinguished service to the Wayham veterans and community. Dudley L. Brown, Post 2846 and Exploration. Thank you. I just want to take a second to look around the room and really soak this in. We usually have a moment of silence to honor our ancestors. Can we please have a moment of silence for our brothers and sisters who have gone on to glory? My grandparents, Frank and Nana, J1, Jason Vieira from Moke Dale. Come on, in your own mind, say it and people. Say it out loud, please. We're going to honor them right now. Just say their name. It's worth it. It's only a second. Anybody you know that's going on the glory, they played a part in this moment. Go ahead and say their name. Trayvon Miranda. I hear you keep on saying it. Greg Bradley. They deserve this moment. That's right. I'm not here without them. Tommy Roderick, I'm not here without them. Auntie Joan, I'm not here without them. Auntie Kutchie, I'm not here without them. Yes, Kid Calcanis. Oakdale Kids. Jason. Yes. Brian. Yes. Hopi. Yes. 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 Jennifer. Yes. 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 Amen. Yes. Come on, give a round of applause to God for our ancestors, because we're not here without them, Joe. We're not here without them. And that is why, DJ, it's easy for me to say God is good all the time. And all the time. God is good. That's right. We heard the song earlier. He's a way maker. Anybody here know he's made a way for you? Because I know he's made a, made, a made a way for me. Mr. Mendes, Maya Angelou said this. Maya Angelou said this. People may not always remember what you say. Pastor Gabe, they said, people may not always remember what you do. But General Maya Angelou said they will always remember how you made them feel. I want to thank you all in here today because I will always remember this day and how you all made me feel. Today I feel loved, celebrated, and appreciated. I want to thank you all for every hug, every handshake, Every high five and hey, hey, oh, oh, come on, you can do better than that. I said, I want to thank you today for every hug, every handshake, every high five and hey, hey, oh, oh, I say to everyone today, thank you. Thank you because we are living today in a day and a time where it seems like a lot of people. A lot of people are pointing out to what's wrong. But today, because of your profound presence in my life, I can point to you as an example for what is what is right in the world. Right. So I thank you all today for being part in what part you play in making me better and making the world better. Amen? Amen. Mom and Dad, Dad. Mom and Dad. 
I want to thank you for your example. I want to thank you for showing me respect, hard work, and community service. Since everybody told a funny story, I think I ought to be able to tell one myself. <laughs> See, when I was young, I went off to boot camp, and there's a drill side in there that was hard that you do not do. One of them is you're not supposed to laugh when a drill sergeant is doing his thing. However, General it happened more than a few times. <laughs> the ship started had all these people, all these young soldiers just shaking and crying and scared, yet I still had this little chuck. <laughs> I heard that Oak did. So finally the drill sergeant pulls me aside, Mr. Jones, like he did. He was the slapper, by the way. I might as well put it out there publicly. <laughs> His big brother name? Terminator. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I ain't got to say nothing now. I got the mic now. Rhonda, you better be careful. I got some stories too. Now here's the drill sergeant. You got all these young people scared, and I still had this little chuckle. And finally, the drill sergeant pulls me aside, and he says, Private Barnett, Private Barnett, what are you laughing at? I said, drill sergeant. I said, drill sergeant, I know that you are teaching us discipline and respect. I said, drill sergeant, I mean no disrespect right now, but have you ever met my mom? <laughs> True story. I said, drill sergeant, I got to keep it real. I got to keep it real, drill sergeant. I said, there is nothing you can do to me. And there is nothing you can say to me that I haven't heard already. In fact, I said, drill sergeant, I got to be honest. That's why I'm here. I said, drill sergeant, it's easier to be with you here in boot camp than be at home with my mom. Mom, go ahead and stand up one more time, Mom. Go ahead and stand up real quick. Go ahead and stand up real quick. Stand up real quick, Mom. Yeah, yeah. yeah go ahead, Dad. Stand up. Stand up. But Dad, you was the one that had to lick the wounds, Dad. Listen, y'all, my mama may be short, but I tell you, she got some long reach. She was like Ivy. She floats like a butterfly and stings like a bee. Shoot, my mother like Mayweather, she's still on the feet of She's still on the feet. What? It's about to get real up in here. It's about to get real. My mother has always shown me, Uncle Toot, discipline and respect and the proper ways to act and react to people. And if that didn't work, if she didn't work it out. Ladies and gentlemen, she had this thing called the Mother Mafia, <laughs> AKA the Sister Squad, Jean, Jane, Joan, Laura, Elsa Mae, Christina, Rita, and Judy. For you that don't know, that's her sisters. <laughs> now understand this, the reason why I call her Mother Mafia and Sister Squad, this was before a time before cell phones. That's right, I'm going to come over here with my cell phone, folks. This was a time before them cell phones. And believe it or not, young people, they didn't even have cell phones. But you know when you guys do a little stuff, you know, just a little stuff? Well, I did a little stuff, too. And guess what? By the time I got home, it was her and the whole sister squad. They're like the mafia, they didn't have a cell phone. News travels fast in Oakville. I think they call those interventions now. Hmm. Mom and Dad, because of you, because of you, I passed boot camp with flying colors. 
Well, flying colors and maybe a little couple push-ups. She's got a couple, couple push-ups. And now your baby boy is a colonel. And not only am I a colonel, but I'm a colonel who knows that his mom is the general. <laughs> Through them and my fabulous family, I learned how to love. My mother and her sisters raised over 20 foster brothers and sisters. That's love. That's love. My mother taught me nobody goes hungry. If they are hungry and I got food in the refrigerator, you invite them over. And guess what, Mom? I'm paying that today because my kids already texted me and said, can some people come over? <laughs> I said, who? Javen gave me a list of five. Paul gave me a list of five. That's ten. Thank you for showing me how to love. To my sister. given a nickname from her bigger brother, Shake and Bake. How many people remember Shake and Bake? Again, I gotta teach these young people a little bit about Shake and Bake, right? Shake and Bake, young people, was this bag. And then you would put this good ingredients, this good season, this good sazon, this goya. And you would put it in the bag. See, they don't know nothing about that because it's beep, 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 beep. <laughs> No, there's a process to good food, my brothers. So, so what you got to do is when you put the shake and bake in the bag, Jose, you know what I'm talking about. What you got to do with it, like the Iotas, you got to shake it up. But here's the interesting thing about shake and bake. Whatever meat you put into it, even if I get calcanus meat from my aunt, least. No, never, never. <laughs> The shake and bake, watch this. Whatever the meat you put in takes on the flavor and it makes it better than it was before. So, Robin B., you thought that I called you shake and bake because when you was on the court and I was in college and I had to travel down Route 195 and I had to go down Route 6 and take a left on Viking Drive and pay my $10, I think you owe me some money for all that gas. <laughs> you thought that I was calling you shake and bake because of your moves. But I want to let you know that's not why I call you shake and bake. I call you shake and bake because you're the type of person that whenever anybody comes close to you and touches you just like shake and bake, you make everybody better. Thank you for making me better. Shake and bake, Robin B. I'm gonna get you some shake and bake so you can help me out. <laughs> And to my cell phone, children. <laughs> to my children. I remember driving down to the high school and putting you three in the car. Paul, Javen, and Heavenly. I remember driving down and putting you all in the car and understand that's three and I was a single dad at the time so you know the score that's three on one and, and, and I'm a single dad and I got to be at, at school at 720. You all know what I'm talking about so can you imagine waking up three kids trying to get them ready for 720. That means in the car, that means teeth brush, that means the right socks on the right feet because at the time they were eight, eight and seven years old. And I think today, young men, 
I think today one of those hairstyles to the left or one of those hairstyles to the right, I think we might have created that because here's a dad trying to get his young daughter together. So sometimes I had that beret a little to the left, sometimes I had that little cornrow a little to the right, sometimes I combed it, by, but I did my best. So we're responsible for some of the haircuts today. <laughs> But if you remember, because I do, I taught you one prayer every day, Sheldon. I would teach my kids. They would have to repeat this prayer after me or else I wasn't giving them no lunch money. <laughs> they had to say this prayer. And the prayer was simply, Lord, teach me how to love right and live right. Quickly, real fast, look to your neighbor and say, love right. Look to your little neighbor and say, live right. <laughs> Son, look around the room. Daughter, look around the room. This was God's answer to my prayers when I was your age. These are the people God sent me to see and to know what it means to love right and live right. Give yourselves a round of applause for being an example for my children, please. <laughs> to my wife, I want to present something to you because, sweetie, you are like the comforter in the cold nights. You are like s'mores. You didn't let me finish, man. Come on. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Don't hey, and don't be stiff. Don't be don't be taking my line after this neither. I started off, I said, she's like the comforter on a cold night. I know what I said. I wasn't always the chaplain, Dr. Dre. I said, she's like s'mores to a campfire. Oh, yes. Sir. And to go further, she's the rainbow after every storm. You're a woman of value and virtue. You're beautiful to me, both inside and out. Every Christmas. Many people ask me, right? What do they ask me, Sheldon? They said, what do you want for Christmas? And I remind them, Rhonda, I remind them this. Christmas came for me already. For for me, Christmas came when I married you. Aww. It was then, sweetie, that God gave me the greatest gift ever. And that is when you said, I've had a lot of titles in my life, but for me, by far, my favorite title is Kim's husband. Thank you, Kim, for all you do, and most importantly, for all you are. I told you I wasn't always a chaplain now. your committee, auxiliary. auxiliary in the building, hey, chefs, hey. cooks, Naomi, give it up for the food, it was so, hey. so, so good, Janine on, oh, how do you say that word, charcuterie, I like it, all right, Janina was awesome, Janina was awesome, General Minor, 
We got the generals in the house. Right? You general yet? You a general? General of Massachusetts, Dana Sanders. Whoa! Let's give it up for the sisters in the Lord. That's right. General. To everyone here, just as a soldier, love you, Paul D. Yeah. Love you too, Maki. I heard that voice. I know you're the one that pledged me back in the eighties. I know. <laughs> Just as a soldier has dog tags wrapped around his neck that drape across his heart, carrying them with him everywhere he goes in life, until he takes his last breath. Know this, that I have you all wrapped around my mind and across my heart. And like a soldier's dog tags, I carry you all with me wherever I go unto my last breath. So it is with hot thumping, fist pumping joy that I say to you in my native Cape Verdean tongue, Muto obrigado, thank you, thank you, God bless, and I wish you God's best.